Hey guys, just wanted to go over a few things that we went over today in class. Um, what we have here on our screen, it's just a reminder that we're able to group together addition and subtraction because they're so similar. Because, remember, their very first step would be to find common denominators. Um, as far as multiplication and division, we're able to group them together because they're so similar. Because their first step is that we need to make sure that they're in numerator denominator form. Um, so looking at just a couple of these first and going over that, let's take a look first at some addition and subtraction. So, so just as a simple reminder, we need to make sure we have common denominators first. So let's kind of group this off to the side or let's, um, I'll tell you what, let's go ahead and just move that out of the way. Um, let's look at a problem first. Let's say we have, um, Let's start off with mixed numbers, too. Let's say we have 6 and 3 fourths plus 2 and 1 eighth. Somewhat similar. So remember with addition and subtraction, as far as mixed numbers go, we can isolate our fractions first, meaning we'll come back and get this 6 and the 2 later. First, let's focus on that, that 3 fourths and 1 eighth. So looking at those fractions by themselves, 3 fourths and 1 eighth, I want to find a common denominator for these two. So remember what we have to do there is I'm going to look at all my multiples of 8 and all my multiples of 4 and in looking at all of my multiples I'm looking for something that they have in common. So looking first at 8, my multiples of 8 include 8 times 1 which is 8, 8 times 2 is 16, 8 times 3 is 24, 8 times 4 is 32. So I can stop there. Let's let's look at our 4's now. 4 times 1 being 4, 4 times 2 being 8. Therefore, we've already found our common denominator. There it is. It is 8. So what that means is I'm going to use 8 as my common denominator. So let's actually move all this out of the way for a second. Um, again, we're, like I said, the original problem we had was this, uh, 6 and 1 eighth. Oops, nope, that's not what it was. It was 6 and 3 fourths, sorry guys, plus 2 and 1 eighth. Okay, so again, we're focusing on that 3 fourths and the 1 eighth right now. Like I said, we'll come back and get the uh, 6 and the 2 later. So looking at that, we decided our common denominator was 8. So what that means is we have to change both of those fractions to something out of 8. So looking at those one at a time, looking at 3 fourths first, we need to find an equivalent fraction for something over 8. So looking at that first, remember, what did we do to get from 4 to 8? Whatever we did down there, I'm going to have to do the same thing to the top. And what we did was we multiplied by 2. So therefore, I'm going to have to do the same thing up here at the top and 3 times 2 we know is 6. So in place of this 3 fourths, it no longer exists, I'm now using my new fraction, which is 6 eighths. Okay, I'm going to do the same thing over on the other side to that 1 eighth. 1 eighth already has the common denominator of 8, so there's nothing I have to do in order to change it to something over 8. Well, all we did was times 1, and 1 times 1 is 1. So our fraction that we're going to use over here is 1 eighth. So adding these two fractions together, our two new fractions again, 6 eighths plus 1 eighth. I can add that together now. 6 plus 1 is 7, and then 8 stays our denominator. So there's our fraction answer, 7 eighths. Now is where we go back up and get those whole numbers. Let me move some of this out of the way here. Hang on. So just erasing this here to get it out of the way. Down at the bottom, that's our fraction answer. Again, now we add together our whole numbers, which is 6 plus 2, and that gives us 8. So my total answer in putting these two together is 8 and 7 eighths. So writing that total over here on the side, 8 and 7 eighths. That's our total answer. So now let's take a look at our addition and subtraction. So let's move all this, I mean, I'm sorry, our subtraction. So moving this out of the way, let's take a look at a very similar problem. Um, let's say we have uh, 8 and, oh, I don't know, let's say 5 sixths minus 
let's say three and one fourth. Yeah, let's take a look at that, why not? Okay, so looking at this problem we have up here, very similar to our addition. Ignore that eight and the three right now because we're gonna come back and get that at the end. We wanna focus on the five sixth plus the one fourth, I mean, I'm sorry, minus the one fourth right now. So in subtracting those two again, idea is that we need to get that common denominator. So we're looking at all my multiples of six and all my multiples of four. So in drawing all these out, six times one we know is six, six times two is 12, six times three is 18, six times four is 24. So let's stop there and let's take a look at our fours. Okay, so four times one is four, four times two is eight, four times three is 12, up, oh, there it is. Our very first one that we have in common happens to be 12. So that's what we're gonna use here. Um, so in moving, moving that out of the way, let's go ahead and erase that. Um, again, we're looking at five, six, and one fourth, but now I need to change that denominator to 12. So again, just like we did on our addition problem, let's take that one at a time. Looking at just the five, six right now, we need to change that to something over 12. So to get from 6 to 12, what we did down there was we multiplied by 2, and whatever you do at the bottom, you must do to the top. So we're going to take 5 times 2, and that gives me 10. So there's our new fraction that we're going to use in this problem. 10 twelfths, 5 6 no longer exists. We need to do the same thing over on the other side to our other fraction, 1 fourth. We're also going to change that to something over 12. So what did we do to get from 4 to 12? We multiplied by 3, so therefore I need to do the same thing up here to the top, and 1 times 3, sorry, that's really sloppy, um, 1 times 3 is 3. So the new fraction that we're going to use here is 3 twelfths. So let me move a little bit of this out of the way. Um, whoops. So let's just scratch that for a second. All right, guys, so now what we're working with is the 10 twelfths minus 3 twelfths. Um, so now I can go ahead and subtract this and I'm left with 7 twelfths as my fraction answer. Remember my original problem was 8 and 5 six minus 3 and 1 fourth. So I have to go back up there and get those whole numbers now. 8 minus, oops, 8 minus 3 is 5. So my total answer being 5 and 7 twelfths. So that's our subtraction. So let me go ahead and just delete this right now and let's look at one other subtraction problem. Remember only in subtraction will we every now and then we may have to borrow. So let's take a look at a problem where we may have to um, borrow. So in looking at let's say 5 and 1 eighth minus 2 and 3 fourths. So in looking at this particular problem, it looks like a regular subtraction problem right now. So I'm going to go ahead and treat it like one. Just like we did on the previous problem, I'm looking right now at just 1 eighth and 3 fourths. Again, in looking at 1 eighth and 3 fourths, if I was to go through all the multiples of 8 and all the multiples of 4, the very first one that they're going to have in common is 8. So 8 is my common denominator, meaning I can leave this 1 eighth as is. It already has the de denominator I want it to have. That 3 fourths, I need to change it to something over 8. So thinking about that, you know, if we need to, we can draw it over here to the side. 3 fourths to something over 8. Remember, to get from 4 to 8, I had to multiply by 2. So I need to do the same thing up here to the top. And 3 times 2 is 6. So that makes this new fraction 6 eighths. Here's where I realize I cannot subtract those two. I cannot take 6 from 1 because 6 is larger than 1. So there's where we need to borrow. So with that in mind, again, you always borrow from the first whole number. So I'm going to borrow from that 5, and I'm simply just going to rearrange that 5 and make it 4 and 8 eighths. Four, remember, 4 plus 8 eighths is the same thing as 4 plus 1. So therefore, that's the same thing as 5. All I've done is taken that 5 and rearranged it so that it, it has a bigger fraction on it now. Don't forget, though, 5 isn't by itself. 5 also has that 1 eighth on it. So I have to add that to the 1 eighth that's already there. 
making this number now 4 and 9 eighths. Again, the whole idea is, is I've just taken from the whole number and added it to the fraction to make the fraction larger so that I can now subtract my 2 and 6 eighths. So I went ahead and I can, I can actually do that now. 4 minus 2 gives me 2. 9 minus 6 gives me 3. And 8 stays in my denominator. So my total answer is 2 and 3 eighths. So that was our, our borrowing. Don't forget, for anybody who wants to, if, if borrowing just really throws you for a loop, you could also use the uh, method that we looked at in our multiplication and division where we made them improper. So just looking at example with that, here was our original problem again. So it was 2 and 3 fourths. Looking at this, once we found those common denominators and we said, okay, this is 1 eighth and this was 6 eighths, once we found those common denominators and we realized I couldn't subtract, what I could do is I can actually bring those whole numbers back into the problem. Let me move this out of the way and make it a little bit, uh, give a little bit of space here. Um, so I could move this over here. Okay, so I can bring those whole numbers back into the problem. So bring down my 5, bring down my 2. So now here's my problem. The only difference is I've found common denominators and I've changed 3 fourths to 6 eighths. Now what we can do is we can make these improper fractions, allowing us to go ahead and subtract these two. So ma remember, making improper fractions, all we need to do is take this 5 times 8 and then add 1. Remember, that's how we, you know, we move in that counterclockwise direction to make them improper. So 5 times 8 being 40 plus 1 is 41, and then 8 stays our denominator. Now I can go ahead and subtract 2 times 8 is 16, plus 6 is 22. Now I can go ahead and subtract these two. And that will give me 41 minus 22. That gives me 19. Oh, whoops. Let me go ahead and change that. That gives me 19 over 8. So 19 over 8, I'm running out of space here. Hang on. So let's actually go ahead and just move all this out of the way. So my answer is 19 eighths, just like we see down in there at the bottom. And remember, when we're reducing improper fractions, improper fractions, I want to see how many times will 8 go into 19. And 8 goes into 19, and if it helps, you can draw it out this way. 8 goes into 19 two times, because 2 times 8 is 16 and I subtract and get a remainder of 3. So my, my numerator is 3, my denominator stays 8. So we get the same answer that we got a second ago. So that's, again, that's totally up to you on whether or not you want to use the borrowing method for that subtraction problem or if you want to use the um, improper method for that problem. Um, getting into now multiplication and division. Multiplication and division, remember we needed to make sure that they were in numerator denominator form, meaning that if I have, I don't know, say uh, 3 sevenths times uh, 5 eighths, I don't know, just making this problem up. Um, when I'm multiplying this, these are both in numerator denominator form, so I can go ahead and move straight across. So 3 times 5, I know that gives me 15. Down to the bottom, 7 times 8 gives me 56. 15, 56, that's kind of a weird um, fraction. Surely we can reduce that, but in looking, 15. I can divide that by 15. I can't divide 56 by 15. Um, let's see, 15, I can divide that by 5. 56 won't be, I can't divide that by 5. Um, 15, I can also divide that by 3, but 56 can't be divided by 3. So, therefore, this particular question, or this particular, um, I'm sorry, fraction is already reduced. So that's our answer. So that's the goal in, in, in multiplication. We want to make sure that we can just multiply our numerators straight across and our denominators straight across. Um, remember, if they're not in numerator denominator form, there's only two other forms that you'll see. And let me show you one that has both forms. Um, looking at, say, um, 5 and 3 fourths, can't write today, times 8. 
Neither one of these fractions are in numerator denominator form. Um, in the first one, I have a 5, which is a whole number, a numerator, and a denominator. Um, only in, in 8, 8 is just a whole number by itself, so it's not in numerator denominator form either. So, what I'm going to do is, again, with mixed numbers like we have in that first one, that's where we need to make them improper first, and that's moving in that counterclockwise direction, multiplying, then adding. So we take 5 times 4 to get 20, plus 3 gives us 23, and then 4 stays our denominator. Over there with our 8, 8 we simply put over 1, and now we're in numerator denominator form for both of these. So in going straight across, I need to multiply 23 times 8. I don't know what 23 times 8 is. Let me see here. Uh, 23 times 8 gives us 184, and then down at the bottom, 4 times 1 gives us 4. So what I need to do, this is my answer. I'm left with an improper fraction, so I need to go ahead and see how many times 4 will go into 184. It happens to actually go in evenly. Um, so let me move some of this out of the way. Remember our answer is 184 over 4. So we look at it this way, 184 divided by 4. And if you check on your calculator, 184 divided by 4 is an even 46, which means since there's no decimal behind it, that means there's no remainder. So my answer would simply just be 46 in this case. So remember that's, you know, your multiplication. You need to make sure you're in numerator denominator form. If it's not in numerator denominator form, we put it in that numerator denominator form and then we just go straight across. Let's take a look at a division problem because division was pretty much the exact same in that we also needed to make sure it was put in numerator denominator form. So let's let's look at another problem. Let's say we have this time I have 9 divided by 3 and 2 fifths. Okay. So 9 divided by 3 and 2 fifths. Remember, division was the exact same as multiplication and that we need to make sure we're in numerator denominator form first before we do anything. So I'm going to take my 9 and put it over 1, just like we do with all whole numbers to put them in numerator denominator form. Still division right now. That 3 and 2 fifths, that is a mixed fraction. To get that in numerator denominator form, just like on the last problem, we need to put it in improper form. So I take my 3 times 5, which is 15, plus 2 gives me 17, and then 5 stays my denominator. Now, in division, and in division only, that's where we apply that keep, change, flip rule. So KCF is what we called it. We keep the first fraction the same, change division into multiplication, and then we're going to flip the last fraction. So... Let me move some of this out of the way because I'm running out of space here. 9 over 1 divided by 17 over 5 is what we have. So in applying our keep, change, flip rule, then what we then have is we keep 9 over 1, change, division into multiplication, and we flip 17 over 5 becomes 5 over 17. So now I just multiply straight across just like we do any time we have a multiplication problem. 9 times 5 gives us 45 and 1 times 17 is 17. So this is a correct answer. We need to go ahead and make sure that we reduce our answer. So I need to know how many times will 17 go into 45. So in dividing it out this way, 45 divided by 17 is what we're doing. 17 actually goes into 45 twice because 2 times 17 ends up giving me 34. Did I do that right? Yep. Yeah. Um, so I need to go ahead and subtract to get my denominator here. 45 minus 34 is 11. So that means my answer, remember your answer to your division problem is your whole number. Your I mean your remainder becomes your numerator of your fraction and your denominator stays the same. So this would be 2 and 11 seventeenths. Um, and that's division. So that is fractions in a nutshell. Um, went over it kind of quickly on this too, just so you guys can have something to study this weekend. If you guys have any questions, like I said in class today, please, please, please do not hesitate to email me and um, I will help you with anything you need. All right. Thanks, guys. Have a great weekend.